Is it on? Welcome back to another episode of Is It On? I'm your host, Mark Keys. And today, we are gonna be touching on a segment called Ate That. And I have a special guest here. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Janis Mianovic. I'm a psychology major here at Utica University. I'm a senior and today I'll be making some Bosnian food for you all. Okay, so we have some of the ingredients in front of us right now. Um, let's start off with you if, and you could just name them going across. Yeah, sure. So right here we have some tomato paste, uh, minced garlic. These are sour cabbage leaves. Here's the beef that we'll be using, just some regular ground beef. We got some rice that we will be mixing with the beef as well. Here are our spices. We have some, a Bosnian spice named baguette. I don't know the English equivalent of it. It's pretty good. We have paprika here and we have some pepper, about a tablespoon, each, teaspoon, teaspoon each. Um, here's oregano, same thing as the tomato paste. We're just gonna give it that flavor for the meat to sit in. Here are the spices for something else we'll be making. We'll put that on the side for now. For this, we'll be using about half an onion and we got some bread to eat it with afterwards. And this right here is for chavapi. That's also what we're gonna use the ground beef for. Those are just little beef patties that are rolled into like sausages. You eat them on the side and we're gonna season them with this, which is about pepper, vegeta, maybe no paprika, but that's about it. So what are like the first things that you do in this process? Like the first thing would have to be cutting up the garlic and the onion. I've already cut up about a quarter of an onion. It looks like a lot. We got to cut it up into finer pieces, but here's some more onion. Here's the second half that we want. You just want to, just like this. It's a little bit messy, but it's cooking as Marquis says. You can grab them, just cut them up into tinier slices like that. Honestly, this does look like a lot, so I think this will be the last of it. Um, could you use like a green pepper for this, or is it strictly like you would have to use an onion and a garlic? Or are, are these like the bottom rules of this dish? Those are like the basis of it. But you did bring up an interesting point. There is a similar food where instead of cabbage leaves, you use like those big bell peppers mm -hmm. and you stuff it all in like that. That's pretty good too. Okay. But I've never made that before, so. Good. Just cut all this stuff up. Okay, that should be enough garlic. And now we have the onion. I'm Sorry, garlic. garlic. <laughs> I mix that up a lot. It's actually in Bosnian. It's, this would be called onion, right? And this is just white onion. That's the English equivalent of it. So we just call them both in my house. We're gonna need about three cloves of this, but since we have minced garlic, I don't know, I guess we could try this. How much do you think would be about three? Yeah. Thank you. Ooh, that's strong. I think that'll be about three. I think that'll be enough. Okay, sure. Away. You got it. Appreciate it. Okay. Next, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wash about a cup of rice. So I think this is a cup I measured beforehand. Make sure I'm just gonna come over here, open it up. So right now he's just gonna wash his rice. Um, I think it's good that everybody should wash their rice because if you was ever making rice and I know the bottom, like when everything rises up to the top, everything's there, you don't want. Yeah, all that starch, so it makes the water murky. Mm -hmm. How many times do you wash your rice? Until the water's Until clear. clear. But that could take a while. Yeah, it could. So I just, I do it like three times. Three times, but okay. Yeah. Oof, oof, oof. We're losing some rice, but it's all good. I feel like, um, you know what you should invest in? Especially if you, if, or if you're a person that eat rice a lot and you want to wash it, mm. it's like these bowls that you can get off like Amazon. They got like holes at the bottom and you just put the rice in and it mm. makes it way more faster just to wash it. Absolutely. Yeah, sure, that'll be good. This is three times washed. And now we're gonna just pour all of this into the same bowl here. Are you gonna mix it all in? Yeah, because this is going to go... Do you want me to move this? Oh yeah, thank you. So this is going to go on the beef later when we're mixing up all the spices and stuff. We're gonna, we want this stuff to be mixed in with the beef as well. So... A little bit messy, it's all good. Thank you. Okay. And where is this like dishes from? Like, This is a Bosnian dish. 
Uh, if you look online, it could say something like Turkish or something, but we do share similar cultures, so it's from the Balkan area. Uh, if that gets caught up in the beef, that's fine too. All right. So I'll take the bigger one for first. So wait, what are you about to do with the beef right now? So the beef, we're just gonna, basically we're gonna season it with this smaller packet, where is it? Right here. And then we're gonna mix all this stuff together. Well, at home we usually do it in a big bowl. So I'm just gonna take it out. This should be enough. Ooh, excellent. Okay. So. Now how, and how do you season it? Season it with this, like I said earlier, teaspoon of vegeta, paprika, and pepper. I already mix it all up together. Let me just open it right here. Just trying to get a nice even spread now because it is a little bit weird without the bowl, but I think right now we could afford to just start mixing it. Spread it out more. Get everything all together now. And granted, I do have the exact measurements of beef, so but not here. Usually at home when you're making it. So we might have a little bit too much, but that's fine. Too much beef, too much rice, doesn't matter. Make sure everything's mixed together as well as possible. Okay, okay. I actually never seen like this before, so I'm kind of interested in mm -hmm. learning this. I'm just trying to get everything to get stuck together. It's a lot harder without the bowl. You don't need this? Nope, we'll be fine without it. Rice mixed up. More onions in there too. And is this for like filling? Like yes. When like when would you eat this? Like is this like a a um, meal, a snack? Like how, this when? is like a meal. I mean, okay. Usually, it doesn't have to be on special occasions. But since it's a lot more work than other meals, you kind of do do it on special occasions, like eat or like when you have family coming over and stuff like that. Okay. Oh boy. Just want to get everything as compact as possible. Okay, we got a lot of flake in here, so I think that's good. We got everything that's going to stick. Maybe a little bit more. I want it to be real tasty for y'all. Okay. Okay. All right, so, so after... We get into this. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna use this for? So that is what we're gonna, we're gonna see how it's all tucked in, in there. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take one out and unwrap it. And we're gonna wrap the meat inside of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is some stuff that we gotta do with that first. And I think we can go ahead and do that now and make a little bit of a mess, but that's fine. Let's wash our hands now. Okay, so now these are also tightly packed. I'm gonna be careful not to rip them. Okay, so. We have a bunch of them wrapped into one. You kind of want to just unwrap them. It looks gross, it'll probably smell gross, but trust me, it's really good. So we have a few giant ones here. Is that okay if I put on a little bit on the table? Yeah, I don't, yeah, because the table's clean. Okay, but, but so we got one here. Now we're gonna wash this, because we're gonna do about half washed, half unwashed, because it is a slightly different flavor for each. So it just depends on what kind of person you are and what you like. And is this cabbage cabbage, like the cabbage that, cause I thought, like, you know, I thought of it like to be green. Mm -hmm. That's why I was like, hmm, I've never seen this cabbage before. Yeah, it's like fermented cabbage, like pickles and stuff like that, how they got all that juice on them. It's basically the same process as done here. So I guess we could wash this batch. Yeah. Sorry about that. There we go. Oh, there we go. I'm seeing different sizes and varieties. And where, where can like anyone go get this from? So you can find them at Walmart, but not often. There is a local grocery shop called Hannaford. They have all kinds of cultural foods there. Just look in the Bosnian aisle. I'm sure you'll find this. And of course, there is different brands and such, but as long as it says sour cabbage, you'll be all right. I'm gonna push this to the side a little bit. Okay, 
Now this is the tricky part. This is probably the hardest part, just rolling it up. But before we even begin rolling it up, there is like some hard stems down here at the bottom. You can't really, see, you can see it, but it all looks the same. Just right here is like a really hard rubbery part. Since we're gonna be, you know, making this kind of like a stew, you wanna just cut it out. You don't wanna be chewing something crunchy, you know? Cut that out and just put it to the side there. Okay, let me see how big this bad boy is. Hmm. This is pretty big, so we could, let's try it. Typically you don't want bigger leaves because it's gonna make it harder to wrap, but this isn't, I feel like we can handle this. So what you wanna do, you wanna take just like a, a kind of like a pinch here, roll it up into like a ball and just put it right in the middle, right in the middle above where we cut it off. Yeah, it is pretty big, I'm gonna take a little bit more. This is like where the experimentation comes in because I'm no pro with the rolling part. We're just gonna roll it. My technique, you just roll it one time and then take the left side, either side, but left side I do first. Stretch it across all the way as much as possible. Tuck it in a little bit and right side. Tuck that in and just finish rolling and hope that it stays. Okay, okay, we got a little bit dangling part. That might have been a little too big, but that's fine. Now this is the finished product right here before we cook it. So we just have to open up the pot now and just lay it down to rest. You want it on or not? Hmm? Do you want this on? No, not yet. Okay. I want to make a few more. So we just repeat the process. Same thing. See how big, oh, this one's like a pretty good size. So again, that kind of hard stem, that rubbery part, take your knife, just cut it off a little bit. And just put it on the side. Oop. There we go. This is gonna get thrown out. We're not gonna use that at all. You can use it if you like it crunchy, but I don't know, that's kind of like not a norm. So, there we go. Does it matter how much meat you can stuff in or? Well, you just want it to be able to be rollable, you know? So don't put too much, but I don't know. If you're really good at rolling, you can put as much as you like, as long as you can make it that shape. Okay. See, now this is a smaller one, put a little bit too much in. I'm not that good at rolling, so. We have a rip, that's totally fine. Okay, see this one's a little bit too small, a little bit too ripped, but that's totally fine. We'll put that and we'll come back to it. Because what we can do is, since this one's a little bit big too, you can just cut this part off. Okay, I have a question. So if, so if one is ripped, mm -hmm. can't you just take another one and just wrap it that's over? That's exactly what we're gonna do, yeah. Oh. Not, not two whole ones, that's gonna be way too thick to chew through. Mm. It's gonna make it chewy, so we're just gonna kind of patch it up a little bit. And this is where the pros come in, which I am not. I see my mom just fix it up, up beautifully. My dad does the same stuff, so hmm, not very good, not very tight. We'll put it in, but we might come back to fix it later. Thank you. Okay, we've got like six, six rolls of sarma ready to be cooked. They're all rolled up. Oh, I want them literally. Can they see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Ooh, that one's a little bit ugly. I know we said we'd come back to it, but Okay. Let's leave it. That's going to break apart and there's just going to be like little bits and chunks of meat and rice that you can scoop up later on. We're going to want to add about one cup of water to this before we cook it. I don't really know what one cup looks like. Do you know? Um, you would know. I don't know. Oh, you know what? We want to cover it. I'll cover, cover it. Okay. Cover it. Yeah. So what we just did, we just filled these sonomit up with water until the water just about covers the top of them. Can you guys? That's great. Excellent. And now we're going to add our tomato sauces. Good job, thank you. All right, we're going to need about one teaspoon. I always mess that up, saying tablespoon. One teaspoon. And that should be enough for that. It's going to come off. You just, I think you just have to keep mixing it. Keep mixing it. All right, now we're going to mix this up until it comes off. Excellent. Okay, tomato paste is done. That's all we need. That's not that much for it. But for the oregano, we're going to need about three teaspoons. Gonna hold this in here. Okay. Oh, thank you. Excellent. Okay, yep. Three, two. Yep. Ooh, that's a lot. Three. Okay. 
Hmm. I'm gonna start mixing this up and see if we need any more. Oops, sorry about that. All right, now. Um, the water if, looks to be. If bad. you need a bigger spoon, mm -hmm. draw. Okay, it looks about right. Maybe we could put one or two more tiny ones in. And what does that do for like the water? The water is basically just there for extra flavoring. So at the end, when we're done with this, right, depending on how much steam there is and how long you cook it, um, there can be some water left over. So when you're eating it, you can just dip this bread into it, just any kind of bread, and act as like an extra flavor boost. Okay, yeah. that looks good. Make sure everything is covered. Okay. And that's good. Now we're just going to cover that with a lid, wherever the lid is, and just watch out for it as it cooks for about an hour or so. Uh, and again, oh, are we on medium? We want to be on medium heat. Okay, good. Uh, that's it for sarma. Usually it would take a lot longer because you do until you got like a full bowl, but we're doing just a light demonstration today. Now we're going to move on to the second meal, kind of like a side course chavapi. So, let this. Okay, and this is when we come back to the cutting board. We don't need the rice and stuff. Push everything to the side. We're gonna need the other beef. No, 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 no. Let me bring this in. Here you go. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. So we can just take the whole thing. Okay. So. Now what we're going to want to do is the same thing, just season it up again. This is what I have in this little container. I wanna do you need another pot for this? Mm, do you have a pan? I do. You do? Okay, we can use that at the end. This is going to be quick to make. All right. Okay. Again, this also has vegeta in it. Uh, no paprika, just vegeta and pepper, basically. Okay, how are we going to do that? I wait, think we can... Wait, what's in it? Vegeta, the same spice that was in Sarma. Uh, I do not know the English equivalent of it, so I'm sorry. But it also has a little bit of pepper in it. Okay. You know, just the regular ground pepper. So I'm thinking we do this the same way, just season it, mash everything up. And what we want to do with this is we want to, once everything is seasoned, we're going to roll it up into a ball, and then we're going to make it long form, like a hot dog, basically. Put it in the oil, let it fry for like five minutes, and it should be good to go. So let's hope we don't make a mess. Again. Okay, okay. Oh, there's still plastic on this cool. Don't want to eat the plastic. Don't eat plastic. Okay, mashing everything together. And it's about like a teaspoon of the sauces each, maybe more. Just, it all depends on how much meat you have. So we didn't use all the sauces, I mean spices, sorry. All the spices last time for Sarma, we won't use all the spices here because it depends on how much meat there is and whenever it looks good. Okay. Looks good now. Put a little bit more in. Mix everything together. And what we can do is... Um, so I already have the pan out for you. Oh, thank you. Uh, is that plastic bowl empty? Yeah. Okay, can we just use that? Just mm -hmm. pour a little bit of water in there. Because okay. we want to make our hands a little bit wet. That'll make the rolling a lot easier. Enough water? Yeah, thank you. When you say rolling it, like when you're making it skinny? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the way I do it, I make it into a ball first because I feel like that's easier to get it all skinny. But you know, everybody's got their own techniques and stuff. So just wet your fingers a little bit. And same thing, you just grab that pinch or so, roll it into a ball. Let's see if I'm a pro at this. Maybe not. Do you want this on or it's off right now? Uh, off right now. Okay. Because I don't know how long it'll take, how much we'll make. So. And the oil heats up relatively quickly, right? Do we have oil? Okay. Just keep rolling them. Rolling them. Oh. All right, see, now it's getting a little sticky. Now you put your hands in the water again. Oh, no. You want to put as little pressure as possible on this. That's what I've learned in my experience. 
because if you put too much pressure it just gets a little bit too sticky it gets into a little bit of a weirder shape and you want to just be like a sausage chorizo this is fine this is a perfect shape we'll put this on the side and we have this whole meat mound to do this with and wet fingers don't forget that light 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 make sure everything's compact and start rolling don't put any pressure on it it'll just mess up the shape put as little pressure on it as possible that's about the only pro tip I can give you guys. Oops. Okay. Okay. Kind of sausagey. There we go. That's good enough. Just a little bit of a thick one. Right, so now. these are like little sausages. Yeah, basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just watch your fingers. Get that pinch in. Okay. Ball form. Make sure everything's solid. You know, everything will be tight and solid. Looks solid to me. Let's try it out. Roll it up. Mm. A little bit of a hole in this one. Maybe we can just patch it up with some more. You could just play with it a little bit. It's nothing too serious. This Now this would be more of a casual snack that anybody can make themselves. Typically it's not eaten as its full meal by itself, which is why it's paired with like other food, like bread or vegetables. And in this case we're pairing it up with sodomy, which is not a typical thing to do, but this is the easiest thing I can make, so I want to show it off. Okay, sure. Great shape. We're just going to keep doing this. I have a question. Yeah. So why fry these if ground beef if ground beef makes its own oil? Mm, like that's how, a good how question. How come fry it? Like, I would get it if it was, like, ground turkey. Well, I honestly don't know. I think it's just because it gets a little bit crispy. Uh, okay. When you eat it. I mean, when you fry it, excuse me. And you kind of want that, especially when you have like the crispy bread. This isn't the exact bread we use, but it's better than nothing. I thought I'd bring that here. But when you have the exact bread, everything's just crispy and all the veggies. It's just a crispy meal. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what's next? What okay, do now to we're going to put a little oil. bit of oil. We can yep, use this. Heat it up and we're just going to fry them like normal. Yeah, and I don't know how much oil you do you want to use. So. Just, I don't know. Cover it up. Whatever it looks good. I don't really know the exact measurements for this one. So let's go slowly until whatever looks good. So I'm guessing we're not deep frying them. So it should be like enough to cover up the whole, um, and plus it's gonna make, well, in my learning in cooking, I got taught ground beef makes its own like oil in mm -hmm. a way. Yeah. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's enough oil. Yeah, looks about good. And we just have to wait until it gets hot. Yep. Oh my God, I'm um, talking like I'm the cook. Uh, no, 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 but you are a good cook and you are assisting me, so I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, is this a good heat? I usually do it on high until it starts and then I just turn it down. Yeah, we can put it on five. Okay, okay. Everybody knows frying can be pretty scary. Let's try it out. Okay, it's good. Let's try not to burn ourselves. Whew. Get the little one in, don't forget. Okay. Okay. Drop them in. Don't drop them in. Gently set them down. That's what I mean by drop them in. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna let that do its thing for now. Get the spoon over because we're gonna. Are you gonna flip it with the spoon or? Yeah, I can flip them with the spoon. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marquise is a professional here. He's gonna flip them with the spoon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, he was right. Do not drop them in. Because if yeah. you drop them in, the oil is going to slap you right back. Yeah. I learned yeah. that my first time I cooked this. That I'll never forget that lesson, so we'll be all right. Another thing I learned while I'm, like, while I'm cooking is, like, you can't be afraid of the oil. Because I feel like if you're afraid of the oil, the oil is going to pop on you. Like, it's just guaranteed. Mm -hmm. But majority of the time, like, t just take your time, especially when you're touching oil. Oh, I know okay, see, look, you see it's already browning and stuff like that. But we wanted more, we wanted more. It's supposed yeah, to look darker know. than that. And they shrink too, right? Uh, maybe. Okay, see how it's getting kind of like dark brown here? We want the whole thing to be like that dark brown. Zoop. Push it back. You can in. hold it, like, you can grab it. And hold oh, it. no, I'm okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm afraid of the oil, like you said not to be. I'm not going to mess with that like that. 
So wait, um, how long normally does these does this take? Sarma. Sarma usually takes about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. It all depends on how much steam you let loose, how much you know, how much you open it to check it. But right now, it looks good. It's not even any crazy bubbles, so we'll still keep cooking that. And this should take just about five, ten minutes, just regular frying stuff. We're gonna let it sit right there. Um, I do have a question. So, is it optional the way you have seasoned the meats today? Or is it like a traditional way to go about it this way with these seasons? I would say it's a mix of both because for a sauna, you do need paprika. That's like essential to the taste. Everybody's gonna use paprika, but you know, my family put a little bit of the a little bit of other spices in there too, you know. And with these as well, uh, chavapi, you don't need to put anything in there. It could really just be salt and pepper. That's just the basis, but we put a little bit of extra stuff in there as well. You can also put like onions and garlic in the meat as well, whatever you want. That's just, that's fine. Oh, that's, that's the um, yeah, yeah, steam yeah. coming down. We're good. Now let's check in on these. The oil's getting pretty poppy, so. Whew. When those are done, you can put those in here. I create a bowl for you. So the okay. oil you could drain at the bottom. So you see this side is like done. You see how it's kind of like crispy like that? Mm -hmm. You can do a little bit more. I'm just getting scared of the oil, so I'm playing it safe here. It's already popping, yep. Don't be afraid of the oil. It's popping, man. So, and it yeah. smells amazing in here. Thank you, yeah. Like, this this is like one of my favorite things of like, cooking is like when you, it's like when you can smell the oil, I mean, smell the <laughs> season. You can put them in here. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit, let them cook more. It's just getting loud, I think. Is that a bad sign, would you say? I have no idea. <laughs> Well, no. I no? Would, well, it, I would say depending on how high is your fire. Mm hmm Because yeah. it's like, when your fire is too high, it's like, it will cook, but the inside will, won't cook. Mm. But then when the fire is like, at its right temperature, when it's at like medium, mm -hmm. it's like, the, the, the amount of time it's going to take outside, outside to get cooked, the inside is getting cooked. Okay, okay. So, like, what I'm trying to do is get everybody to look like this these two on all sides so that's don't, how you know it's done but don't flip it don't flip leave it. them leave so them all right, all trick right. is well i feel like the trick is mm -hmm. whenever you put them down since you put them in at, at the same time right whenever you flip them it's gonna be like every every last one of them should look the same as that one when you flip okay them. okay that's like frying chicken okay. think about it like frying chicken frying chicken oh there we go wow see how did you know that's just i don't know that's <laughs> intuition right there. that's motherly intuition this one's That's why when I be like, you would just know. Like when people ask me, oh, well, how many seasons would you put in? Yes, I'll, I'll tell you like how much to put in. But mm -hmm. I feel like when you're cooking, you would know. Mm -hmm. Like how much water to put in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mind you, I'm not an expert cook at all. Uh, I feel like whatever I make here, mm, my parents is gonna be like 10 times better than this. So I hope I'm doing them proud. I mean, you have to start from somewhere. That's true. I mean, how do you think I started? You think when I started learning how to cook, my rice used to come out, oh man. Really? My rice, and I live, I live in a house with like seven people. Mm -hmm. So it was like, when I, when I had to make dinner, I had to cook for the whole house. Everybody, and they all ate that. So when I used to make my rice, and uh -huh. they used to come out bad, mm -hmm. and they used to tell me like, straight up, okay. be like, oh, your rice tastes like rocks. Mm. Oh, okay, so okay. I'm not gonna make no rice no more. All right, I think this one's done. Where can yeah, we... you can put it here. Oh, just right here. Okay. Cause I um I put tissue at the bottom to drain. Yeah, of the to oil. drain the oil. Yes, yes. And this is this is the steam. Yep, that's fine. It's bubbling a little bit, but that's fine. You're gonna wait. Like sometimes the bubble's gonna rise all the way up. That's when you let all that stuff. And rise. that's when you remove it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This one looks good too. Let's move it up. Okay. Let's see how this one looks. We could probably turn this off. I think most of them are done. That's the right one, okay. This one looks great too. Let's go, let's go. Okay, let's see how this one is. These big ones, they probably need a little bit more time. Okay, this is killing me. Can I just remove this? Yeah, sure, try it out. Wait, wait, can I keep it like this? Yeah, usually, so at my house, we have one that's like just a little bit of hole that lets that in. So yeah, the reason happen. it's popping like that is because the steam is and going, it's dripping down, and it's dripping over all that stuff. Yeah, I feel like people. I feel like since people like their sausages made well, not 
What is this considered? I don't want to say the wrong name because I just called it a sausage and I was probably wrong. Well, you can call it a sausage. It's, it's made of beef, like a beef sausage. Uh, in Bosnia, it's called chavapi. Can you? Chavapi. Chavapi, there you go. That was good. Hmm. Chavapi. Chavapi. <laughs> this one's good. Yeah. They kind of came out as nuggets. But I told you that they shrink they ground do. beef. They do. And ground turkey. Shrink. Ground beef and ground I turkey. Do. I think ground turkey do shrink too. I could be wrong. I normally don't use ground turkey. Okay, okay. Uh, whatever, as long as they taste good. That's mm -hmm. all I care about. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. So this is what we made. We've got the two sodma right here, one for Marquise and one for I, two pieces of bread, one for Marquise and one for I, and a bunch of javapi for everyone here. So let's dig in. All right, let me get me a napkin. Oh, good idea. This what? is like probably one of my favorite parts. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I'm scared, bro. I'm gonna just go in. Go ahead, let's do it. All right. Go ahead. Mm. And this is the unwashed one, the more sour one. See, I'm kind of shocked because normally I was really thinking like, I'm like, well, how is the rice is going to get made? Mm. And then it's really soft. Like when you buy into it, it's kind of better than my rice. Oh, really? That's good news, guys. That's really good news. Wow, no. You ate that. <laughs> I ate. Oh, you ate that. Let's go. Oh, let's try to wow. the bread. Which piece do you want? Oh, I got a little bit. I'm gonna get a napkin. And then y'all, I love cabbage. Oh, wow. Did you eat the whole thing? I did. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Let me let's try that. Wow, that's really good. Okay, thank you. It's so like refreshing. And then it's, it's like juicy. Then yeah. you bite into it, it's like a whole glob of like juice that mm -hmm. hits your tongue. It's just so good. Yeah. <laughs> and then let's try this. Come on, let's try it at the same time. Okay. Okay, let's go. Cheers. Cheers. See? Oh, the season's just there, man. I'm gonna try with the bread. Okay. Wait, did I do it wrong? Was I supposed to eat it with the bread? I'm mean, supposed to eat this with the bread, but that's um, fine. Oh. You can eat it in any order. That's food. Nobody's gonna tell you what to do. Okay. I like this. Okay. It's so different. It's my favorite. Okay, great. I would love to make this. I would love to try this on my show. Mm. <clears throat> Hands down. Can't promise that it's gonna come out exactly right, but. You ate that. Yes, thank you. I love this. I love this. And even the bread goes with it. And it's not a heavy meal. Yeah. I can see me waking up afternoon, tearing like six of those up. Oh, really? Okay. Sorry, okay. like six. But <laughs> we have, you know, all good things has must come to an end. Mm -hmm. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank you for coming on, actually, thank you, because thank you are you. a senior. Mm. <sighs> Congratulations to you. Thank you. I want to thank my production team. I want to thank everybody that has been watching Is It On since it came out, because, shoot, since it came out, y'all have been eating up those, um, those videos. And actually, um, I love y'all for that. And I'm out. Until next time. <laughs>